The rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Those famous words from our national anthem were penned by Francis Scott Key during the War of 1812 as the American flag flew over Fort McHenry in Maryland, signaling that the Americans had held the fort against the attacks of the British. 200 years later, the very same flag that flew above the fort is on display at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C., For two centuries, Americans have worked to keep the flag from decay and deterioration. Through the years, it has undergone numerous renovation and reinforcement efforts, including a full backstitch in 1914 and an $18 million conservation process in 1998. The historical richness of the flag makes maintaining it essential. Every great creation requires great effort to maintain, including our nation's powerful founding document, the United States Constitution. Abraham Lincoln once wrote, the Constitution must be maintained, for it is the only safeguard of our liberties. But President Lincoln was not speaking of the original paper Constitution. He was praising the very words and mandates of our Constitution. Together, we can understand the full importance of Lincoln's charge by first viewing the Constitution's beautiful power and by second, seeing the necessity of maintaining this great founding document. The Constitution is revolutionary in that it is a governing document that actually limits the power of the government. It is comprised of seven distinct articles, Articles 1, 2, and 3 outline the legislative, executive, and judicial branches of government, defining term limits, procedures, and the specific limited powers of each branch. Article 4 defines the formation of states and the relationships between states. Article 5 defines the amendment process, mandating the approval of three-fourths of the states for any amendment. Finally, Articles 6 and 7 deal quickly with treaties, debts, oaths, and the ratification process. Additionally, 27 amendments to the Constitution have been ratified, specifying some of our nation's most foundational freedoms, such as voting for all races and genders, legal representation, and the freedom of speech. The simplicity and humbleness of our Constitution is astounding. The fact that our immense nation is governed by seven short articles sets it far apart from the other nations of the world, such as Russia, whose constitution is a massive document containing 137 articles. The simplicity and limited scope of the constitution showed the world that the strength of a nation is not defined by the power of its government, but rather by the freedom of its people. The Constitution built our government from the roots up. By itself, the document is not perfect, but it gave the people the ability to make their government perfect. It gave Martin Luther King the freedom of speech to protest injustice. It gave Washington Post reporters Woodward and Bernstein the freedom of the press to investigate and report government corruption. It gives young American girls and boys of all backgrounds the freedom to dream of becoming president someday. The Constitution empowers America by empowering the people. And yet, how many Americans even understand the power we have been given? A nationwide survey released in 2008 conducted by the Center for the Constitution revealed that nearly 28% of Americans claim to have read the full Constitution. What richness we have missed. The articles and amendments are stitched with a fullness and meticulousness that depicts just how hard our founders strove to maintain freedom. In the early days of our nation, freedom was literally a matter of life and death. The people fully understood the Constitution's importance, and thus they strove to maintain it with great success. Take, for example, the Sedition Act of 1798. 
This act passed less than 10 years after the ratification of the Constitution specified that anyone who printed any criticism of the government was a criminal and subject to fines and imprisonment. Quickly, a number of newspaper publishers were convicted of criticizing the government and sent to prison. Public outcry immediately arose as the people pointed out that the very first amendment to our Constitution states, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. Knowing their Constitution, the people lobbied their lawmakers And when that failed, they voted in new congressmen and a new president in the election of 1800. With new congressmen in place, the law was declared unconstitutional by the House Judiciary Committee and repealed, restoring America's freedom. Americans in 1798 were willing to fight to maintain their constitution. When the constitution appeared to be growing decayed and threadbare, They chose to maintain their constitution and preserve its integrity. But ladies and gentlemen, as deterioration threatened our constitution later in our nation's history, we seemed unwilling to fight for its preservation. Take, for example, Jim Crow laws. Jim Crow laws first sprouted up in the 1880s and were designed to segregate and discriminate against African Americans. Some Jim Crow laws banned African Americans from entering public parks or dining in the same room as a white person. Other Jim Crow laws effectively banned African Americans from voting by issuing discriminatory poll taxes and pre-voting tests with trick questions. In Louisiana, these laws were so effective that between 1896 and 1904, the number of African Americans registered to vote dropped from 130,000 to 1,300, just 1% of what the number had been eight years before. The startling truth is, however, that Americans allowed Jim Crow laws to stay in place until the 1960s, failing to petition their elected officials or vote for those who would truly uphold the Constitution. For 80 years, Americans allowed the Constitution to be trampled on, despite its protection of all races. As seen, for example, in the 15th Amendment of 1870, which states, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged on account of race. Our Constitution continues to be challenged daily by officials who would rather see their personal interests served than the Constitution protected. How can we, the American people, stand ready to defend and maintain our Constitution when only 28% of us have even read it? The time has come for all of us to know our Constitution and to choose to maintain it. In 1789, our founders created the beautiful, concise Constitution on the foundation of the people, tapping into the powerful resource of freedom. 223 years later, the time has come to tap into that powerful resource again, to use our freedom to defend and maintain our Constitution. If we truly are the land of the free and the home of the brave, we must be the courageous defenders of the free. The preservation of our original star-spangled banner shows us that for any effort to survive in its original integrity, it must be maintained, protected from the decay and deterioration that seek to destroy it. Thus, I urge you, ladies and gentlemen, to unite as a nation in maintaining our Constitution's greatness. For as our countryman Daniel Webster profoundly noted, let it be borne on the flag that we have One country, one constitution, one destiny. Thank you.